I'm going to cover Elon Musk's new plan to colonize Mars and what we can expect from that plan. Last year, Musk unveiled the SpaceX Colonization Plan and the Interplanetary Transport System ITS, at the 2016 International Astronautical Congress. On September 29th of this year, Musk updated his Mars Colonization Plan. Did that plan change? Does it sound like it has a shot of actually happening? Let's find out. Welcome to NeoScribe, research in the future for you, so you don't have to. And I, just, a, just a brief refresher on why this is important. I think fundamentally, the future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space-faring civilization and a multi planet species than if we're not. Uh, it, you want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. Uh, and that's what, uh, what being a space-faring civilization is all about. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. Um, and I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. That was Elon Musk talking at this year's International Astronautical Congress, talking about SpaceX's long-term goal to help humanity become a multi-planetary species and have a one million person colony on Mars in the next 50 to 100 years. If you're not sure what he proposed last year, there's a link to my video that covers last year's Mars colonization plan in more detail in the description below. In a nutshell, due to the cost of funding the ITS, SpaceX will be downsizing the ITS to a more affordable design for the Mars colonization vehicle. Musk and SpaceX, they're still trying to figure out what to name the vehicle, but its code name right now is BFR. I believe that stands for Big Freakin' Rocket. According to the plan, Musk wants the BFR to be a one-stop shop vehicle for SpaceX. They want to replace the Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and the Dragon spacecraft with the BFR. By doing this, all of SpaceX's resources that are uh, coming from missions that are done by the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy will be applied to producing the BFR. And Musk said that SpaceX is quote unquote now beginning serious development of the BFR. Some of the elements of the BFR will be carried over from the ITS design and, it, and have already been in development already. The BFR will use the Raptor engine, which is the most powerful engine ever made and is projected to have three times more thrust than the Merlin 1D engine, which is currently used on the Falcon 9 rocket. They've already tested the engine and it has already successfully fired for 100 seconds and is cap it's even capable of firing longer than that. Um, they are currently developing and testing the cryogenic fuel tank. This is a critical element of the vehicle because it's one of the most difficult to properly develop due to the pressures that it must withstand. The third critical element is perfecting propulsive landing. In order to land on Mars where the atmosphere is so thin, propulsive landing is, is a must and it has to be perfected. So far SpaceX has successfully landed the Falcon 9 16 times in a row and Musk said that propulsive landing has gotten so precise that soon it, will be, it won't need legs and it will be able to land straight on the launch mount. The next element they are working on is automated docking. This will allow docking on, on the spacecraft without any pilot control. And SpaceX will be perfecting this capability next year when the Dragon 2 spacecraft docks on the International Space Station without the help of the space station's robotic arm. So how is the BFR different from the ITS? The BFR is still huge. The, the BFR will be 347 feet tall compared to 400 feet with the ITS. It will be 9 meters in diameter compared to 12 with the ITS. The BFR will have 31 Raptor engines compared to 42 with the ITS and the payload to low earth orbit will be 150 tons compared to 300 tons with the ITS. At 150 tons it will still be the most powerful rocket ever built, topping the Saturn V which had a payload of 135 tons. The BFR spaceship will be about the same length as the ITS spaceship, the BFR being 48 meters and the ITS at 49 meters. The BFR spaceship will have 40 cabins uh, which will each hold two to three people in it. The ship will carry about 100 people in total to Mars which is actually around the same capacity as the ITS. The spaceship will have large common areas such as a galley, a solar storm shelter and an entertainment area. 
Just like the ITS, refueling the spaceship in orbit is a fundamental part of the vehicle concept. The BFR will have enough fuel to launch 150 tons of low Earth orbit, and then the ship will be fully refueled in orbit and then have enough fuel to send that 150 ton payload to Mars. The spaceship will be able to transfer fuel from one ship to another. Again, Musk wants to replace the Falcon 9 and Heavy with the BFR and already has a transition plan. But once, once the BFR is operational, SpaceX will produce a stock of the Falcon 9 and Heavies and then use all its resources to solely produce the BFR vehicles. And so the BFR will be used to launch satellites, to resupply the International Space Station, for possible moon missions and of course the Mars missions. This way SpaceX will not need additional funding to, to, pr to produce the BFF. It will be able to produce the BFF with the revenue that they are already receiving. I think this is a great idea. Musk is also talking about using the BFF or using the BFR to collect old satellites and space debris. So similar to the ITS, the game plan for going to Mars is the same. Launching the spaceship into orbit, refueling in orbit, then you go to Mars, and then for the return trip back to Earth, you produce the fuel on Mars and return back. So what does Musk say about what we can expect down the road for the BFR? SpaceX is already building the a facility needed for the BFR. He didn't specify what this facility is for, but they're building a facility. That's a good sign. And they said they plan on starting construction on the vehicle in six to nine months. I think that is awesome. If they can do that, I really hope they can. We will see. And he wants to be able to launch the first ship in five years. Again, I think that would be awesome. Hopefully that can happen. So in 2022, Musk wants to land two cargo ships on Mars and this these missions will be to confirm water resources on Mars and identify the hazards also these mi cargo missions will be to place power sources uh, mining equipment and life support infrastructure um, for future flights and then in 2024 he wants to send four BFR ships to Mars two will be crewed and two will be cargo these missions will set up a propellant production plant and and to build up the Mars base for expansion here's a little clip of what Musk envisions I think that looks pretty cool and the last thing Musk revealed about the BFR was the idea of using the BFR is kind of like a space airliner and be able to transport people anywhere in the world in under an hour. That is ridiculous. I didn't expect that one coming. Doesn't have anything to do with us getting to Mars, but as a side note, I think that's really cool. So in summary, the BFR will replace the Falcon 9 and Heavy. It will be the absolute workhorse for, the, for SpaceX. Launching satellites, delivering cargo to the ISS, setting up bases on the moon and of course colonizing Mars. By making the BFR the workhorse, they can use resources from their existing revenue and putting it towards development of the BFR. I think that really makes the possibility, like I can see that concept. So I am really optimistic and hope for the best. I really hope SpaceX can pull this off, but I wanna hear from you. Do you think SpaceX will start building the BFR in six to nine months like Musk said? If not, when do you think construction will actually start? Comment below and I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you're interested in space exploration, robotics, and all things future, then join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe and this is the end of our journey.